Good morning. It is filled to the brim and I've been gone for a while. I kind of almost forget how to do this. I've been gone for so long, been gone through the month of August, has spent some time with the Lord and um, extended time. I like to do this in August generally every year where we just go and unplug my husband and the Lord and me. And so we have just returned from a remote place in the Caribbean where we just spent time with the Lord and one another and the Lord likes to go deep with me during those times. One thing that I want to say before I begin is I want to give a shout out to my grandson whose birthday was yesterday, Clive. He turned six and so happy birthday Clive to you. Hopefully you enjoyed your Lego set that we sent. And then I want to say uh, dad, he's in, my father is in the ICU in um, the Seattle area up in Washington State and he's been going through some testings and sufferings that have to do with his physical body and dad we're praying for you we're believing god for your healing and restoration so keep my father in prayer if you get this it's a, a difficult time for him and my mom but the lord is with them and we're praying they're surrounded i want to talk to you in the next few days and maybe i'll go even further about our mind the battle of the mind because the mind is significant to how we live our lives in Christ. And so many believers um, have a problem with their minds that really they're not living life abundantly because of the mindsets and many of the what we would call stinking thinking that's going on. The truth is this, the devil wants to capture your mind. And he has always wanted to because that is the control center of your life and also the control center of your emotions. So he's battling for your mind. He has always done that with humans since the Garden of Eden. Eve was tempted or and gave into those temptations, but it came first with a thought and her embracing the thought that the enemy brought her and it led to death. It led to her stepping out of the presence of God, believing something other than what God had spoken, believing something other than the word of God. Let me just land on that. Believing something other than the word of God. I'm going to ask you today, regarding your life, painful situations, difficult situations, good situations, your life, how you function in your life, not just when you are in a spiritual place like church or a Bible study or a time when you are with the Lord, but I'm talking about everything that you do your workplace, your marriage, your entertainment. I'm talking about every part of your life. Are you embracing other thoughts or other philosophies and not the Word of God? The Word of God is not just for a religious box of our life. It's not just for when we feel like having the Word of God. The Word of God is the fuel for our thinking to walk filled with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is the fuel for our thinking. So we apply the Word of God to our lives, to our challenges, to whatever comes to our plate. And a lot of people, a lot of believers, are not applying the Word of God. And actually, they don't even know the Word of God. The Lord wants you to live a life that saturates your mind with the Word of God. Why? Well, because the Word of God brings life to your spirit. It fuels your spirit. But see, the enemy is all about striking against your mind. 
He wants, he is persistent. He uses the world's philosophies. He even uses our flesh, tries to stimulate our sinful flesh to strike against our mind. And remember, our mind is the control center of our mind. So his ultimate goal is to penetrate your thinking and take you captive to do his will through your thought life. Let me say this once again. The enemy's ultimate goal is to penetrate your thinking and take you captive to do his will through your thinking. And you think those thoughts are your thoughts, but actually those thoughts have struck against you and you have embraced them to become your thoughts. And we need to identify the enemy strategies in this. We need to identify thoughts that are against the Word of God. But how do we do that? We have to know the Word of God. How do we know the Word of God? We have to saturate ourselves with the Word of God. You know, we have had an era of time in the church, and I'm talking, well, I, I don't know about all the global church, but I do know about the U.S. church, where the appetite of Christians for the Word of God, the meat of the Word, the meat, I mean going deep, applying, changing, being transformed. The meat of the word has been discarded to, for just simple milk or sometimes not even milk. And so the appetite of people for the word of God has become less and less and less where we have spiritual anorexics walking around that cannot uh, reject. They don't have the, the spiritual strength to reject the diseases of the world and the enemy is all about that. He's all about making sure Christians are weak so that he can control them. The fact is this, we've got to increase our appetite for the Word of God to dwell and saturate and get off some of this other stuff that we are saturating our minds with. we got to get off some YouTube stuff. We gotta get off some reels stuff. We gotta get off some news, some shows, some Netflix, some Prime Amazon video, whatever you wanna say. And, and a lot of times I hear people say, I don't have time for, to read the Word of God. What? You do have time to read the Word of God. You have time to listen to the Word of God. You, do, you need to. That is the essence. That is the fuel for your mind to live as a strong and victorious Christian. See, the truth is this, saturating your mind begins with surrender. Saturating your mind with the Word of God begins with surrender, with crucifixion of your flesh, with laying down your flesh, with denying yourself. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Here we go back to it again. I always tell my congregation, we're going back to that. Paul writes to the Romans, therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Now you are going to surrender and submit yourselves. This is not a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. It's a daily practice that your mind is saturated, that your mind is renewed. But how can we even get to the transformed mind? It first begins by our surrender and our submission. He goes on to say, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not embrace the enemy's philosophies. He is striking against your mind. Do not conform. Do not listen. Do not allow the enemy to influence you. Do not allow the world to influence you. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By your mind. How are you going to do that? By your surrender, by your submission to the Word of God, to the Spirit of God. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit work in conjunction with each other for our transformation of our mind. Then you will be able. Then you will be able. Why are you trying to fight your battles without the Word of God, knowing His Word? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Then you will be able to test. Then you will know 
when you're walking in a transformed mind. The enemy is all about your mind. Now, this is all about, listen, you've got to saturate yourself with the word of God daily. No excuses. You do have time for this. You do have time for this. The enemy is all about striking against your mind until you get in. He's persistent. Now you're going to have to persist in saturating yourself with the Word of God. And that happens through first and foremost, surrender. Surrender. Denying yourself, you do have time. Your mind can feast on the Word of God. There's more to this. We've just only begun. I want you to pray about this Word and apply it to your life, not just your religious box, to every part of your life. God bless you. I love you.